if, if I can say about this 5G, this is really something very new. We don't know anything about it. And here are a few examples. First of all, 5G is such a high frequency that it will be absorbed by skin alone. Secondly, this frequency will make standing wave of radiation between this epidermis and dermis. In this layer between of the in this layer of this living skin between this dead skin top layer and dermis, there will be formed standing wave. So meaning those cells which are there in epidermis will be in this standing wave. What the standing wave will do to, to those cells, nobody knows. It was never studied. And uh, even research can go this way further, te technological research, that is talk about this, that you can put several wireless devices on your body attached to your skin, and they don't need wires to communicate between themselves. They can send signals through the skin. So in this skin, the standing wave, they can send signals, and one device communicate with another device without any wires, without sending signals elsewhere, just through the skin, save energy. Then there is another problem uh, with ICNIRP and 5G, because ICNIRP is preparing, and, and industry is preparing standards for 5G, uh, how to uh, evaluate it, how to measure it, how to implement it, and so on and so forth. And uh, if somebody is in more interested about this, I have written recently one of my blogs, uh, a report from science and wireless event in Australia. And there is written few words about it. But point was this, that our body in, in respect to radiation, whether it was 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G, was divided into these important parts and so-called extremities. Extremities were those non-essential parts. So, for example, for 3G or 4G, those extremities were hands or legs. But our corpse, that was important part, but head was important part, but hands were not so important part. Then sometime people are asking, you know, how it is? People say that don't keep cell phone close to your body, but then you put it to your ear, to your head. No, you don't put it to your head. You put it to extremity. Your ear has been classified as extremity. So meaning when they say, keep your cell phone one inch away from your body, it works because this ear provides this space one inch from your brain. It is everything fine, it's everything safe. But, and also there is this sort of issue that extremities can be exposed to higher level of radiation. Meaning this important part of the body have certain level of radiation that is considered safe. Extremities can be twice as much exposed. Now, in preparation of, of uh, um, what is important, what is unimportant for 5G, ICNIRP is proposing that skin will be within extremities. This is less important. Meaning the only organ, the largest organ of human body, the only organ that will be absorbing radiation will be considered as extremity what it means that it will be allowed to expose it more than those other important parts, which otherwise will not get any radiation because it will no, not get deeper than the skin. So these are those problems that on one hand, we don't have faintest idea what the standing wave will do in our epidermis. Second thing, already is being prepared that industry gadgets can expose our skin more because it will be extremity, unimportant. Whereas skin, if you ask dermatologists, it is very important piece of our body. It is the largest organ of our body. Our immune response depends on skin. That's the problem.
just to, just to comment uh, that there's of course a concern about malignant melanoma if you uh, look into the skin. We made a study some years ago that was some indication of slightly increased risk for melanoma on the side of the head where, where the exposure was from the mobile phone. But uh, there needs to be longer time studies for melanoma and malignant melanoma, at least in Sweden, is the malignant uh, cancer form type that is mostly increasing. It's steeping up the incidence rate. And we don't really know what the microwaves are doing. We know that the UV light, of course, is a risk factor. Uh, I just wanted to comment about what, what the 5G is. Maybe many of you do not understand. It's, uh, if, if it, uh, at this point, we use uh, uh, 3 gigahertz for mobile networking, then the 5G will introduce tens of gigahertz. It's like um, even 40 gigahertz. And these are no longer microwaves, these are millimeter waves. And they have, as Darius very well explained, it, these have totally different uh, biological effects. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, millimeter waves are used as a weapon. Uh, there are armies that use uh, active denial systems which direct millimeter waves to the attacking enemy and they will feel as their skin is burning. Of course, these weapons use uh, much more higher intensity power as, as we uh, expect from the 5G. But uh, it is also interesting to know that um, uh, already for a period of 10 years or so on the market there are millimeter therapy devices which are very low power, less than one milliwatt. And, uh, and these are used to change the metabolism of the, of the, of the cells. And these are mainly used in Russia and the form, former Soviet uh, Union um, uh, states. Uh, in, the, in the West, these devices are not so well known, but they indeed have a biological effect. And these are very, very low power devices and they're based on the res resonant effect on the cells and, and on water mole molecules. Uh, one of these frequencies is 42 gigahertz. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, this were and it will be an extremely interesting period. Maybe it will be very beneficial frequency because uh, in the Soviet time when Soviet space program was developing docking systems for the space space um, capsules, uh, and there was a flu epidemic season, and the entire building, all the institutes, uh, hundreds of workers were ill. And the only department that was not ill was the, was the department who was developing the docking systems radar navigation system with 40, 40 gigahertz. So maybe, maybe after all, we will be saved <laughs> <laughs> from, this, from this electromagnetic menace. <laughs> but um, the original question addressed the reception level, which is better Wi-Fi or 3G or 4G. This is a very, um, if I may say, a cynical question because none of these will um, relieve the electromagnetic radiation, but both are accompanied. So the very strict answer is that none of these can be considered as an alternative. But um, uh, if we go technical, then measurements show that, if you show that if you have the mobile mast very close by, like in the next door, uh, next door building, then the, even the even the 4G and 3G may be lower than Wi-Fi radiation level, but these are in few cases only. But um, let's say that you have a very low radiation from your smartphone or your tablet. But the most uh, problematic thing is that uh, the the uh, tablet and the smartphone have in built-in antennas. And if you hold these devices, you actually do not know where the antenna is. And you may be uh, covering the antenna by which uh, the device thinks that um, uh, the mast is very far away and it will, it will maximize its power out output. And you will be exposed a lot to radiation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>